So we are in Auxerre, or Auxerre. I keep on pronouncing it Auxerre, although I think it's correctly pronounced as Auxerre. The city is supposedly amazing. It looks beautiful from photos and historically it's important as well. The city really went down in history in Roman times under the name of Otusio Durum as a port on the Yon River and a stopover on the Via Grippa linking Lyon to Cologne. In the 3rd century, the Romans made it the capital of the 4th Leonese and surrounded it in the 4th century with an enclosure in which the first medieval town developed later on. Look how beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's our second time in Bourgogne region. Now it's called bourgogne franche Comté because the regions were combined in 2016, I think. But anyway, historically, this is Bourgogne. This city, I've been trying to come here for a long time, but the tickets are insanely expensive, I don't know why. This is the second city in bourgogne franche comte region, after Sons, and I am absolutely in love with this town. It's so beautiful. Initially, it looked like a labyrinth, and we were climbing up and down, but when we reached, the Sons Ravid, literally it was just wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting because I watched some videos and I mean, in reality, it looks stunning. The bishop settled here, the most illustrious being Saint Germain, on whose tomb was founded a Benedictine abbey, a center of Christianity throughout the Middle Ages. The 17th and 18th centuries brought few changes. The city then continued to live from its religious and administrative role, from its vineyards and its port from which the local wines and the woods were shipped to Paris. So while we were waiting for our tours, we decided to get ourselves ice cream. This is the Italian version of ice cream. I don't know, it's at the Maison Grégory Forêt. Forêt? Ah, oh, Ferret, okay. Yeah. Mm. Excellent, because it's really hot today. Okay, genuinely, I cannot get over how beautiful this city is so far. You have all these small, tiny streets everywhere, and they're just gorgeous. The wooden houses, then the houses made out of uh, pierre de taille, so limestone, and everything is just beige, and then with beautiful color. Oh, we're here now walking around the streets because we have two guided visits. We have one in the cathedral because there is a crypt, apparently that's very interesting and historically important. And the second one is in the abbey that has the oldest uh, wall painture painting, basically, uh, yeah, oldest wall painting in France. So this should be interesting. The cathedral dedicated to Saint Etienne was founded in the 4th century. The building we see today dates to the 13th century. The side porches of the facade open into the base of two towers, one of which, that of the south, is unfinished and rises only to the height of the second floor. That of the north, divided into four floors, is 70 meters high and is enriched with small columns, pinnacles, folate ornaments, simulated arcades and niches today stripped of their statues. We asked if the south tower was demolished or dismantled, but the reality is, it was simply not built due to cost. The crypt with five names dates to the 11th century. It extends under the choir, it contains 12th century wall paintings, which I was particularly touched by. The central fresco with Jesus creates a story of the soul's journey to heaven. The Abbey of Saint-Germain was established in the Oratory of Saint-Maurice. 
Saint Germain died in Ravenna in 448. Upon return to Ossé, his remains were buried in the small Saint Marie's church that the saint himself had built for this purpose. Clotilde, wife of Chloe's, replaced the church with a larger basilica. His tomb attracted crowds and the basilica ended up being served by Benedictine monks. This crypt is regarded as the most important Carolingian ensemble in France. It hosts the sarcophagus of Saint-Germain, as well as a set of murals considered the oldest in France. The guided tour takes about an hour, and visitors are told the story of the murals as well as Saint-Germain himself. It is worth noting that the actual remains are no longer inside the sarcophagus. It is not clear where they are or what happened to them exactly. During the revolution, the abbey was sold as a national good. It became a military hospital and later a civilian hospital. By 1984, the hospital was moved out and in 1988 began a major restoration as well as the transformation of the abbey buildings into a museum. Today, one can visit the museum by themselves or with a guide. The saint pierre en valais church has three naves and a chancel. This Gothic building, by its plan and its arrangement, presents a decoration of the classical style. Begun in 1630, it was finished by 1658. In front of the church, the old portal of the abbey is made in Renaissance style. We just came across Guardian and he just started talking to us about the church and he gave us some history. And the Guardian was so funny because uh, basically the church is about to close so we were walking out and he was like do I close you inside? and I was like yeah we already were, we got closed in Noyon he locked us in uh, he was like what happened? and so I told him the story how in Noyon if you haven't seen the episode by the way look up it's there I told him the story how we got locked in the cathedral and then we started talking he was telling us about his life and his son he got married he offered us to drop us off at the train station some people are so nice like it's so sweet I was like no no no, no merci like, like no, don't <laughs> it's okay we can get to the gar we can get to the station but it's just so nice and I noticed that the smaller the town or the further away it is from Paris the more open people are to talking maybe it's because it's the capital so people don't have time I guess I don't know but it's nice here that'll be it for today if you like this kind of content please subscribe that makes a big difference for us till the next one au revoir